All right, I hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we're gonna talk about all of the updates that have been made to Flowwise. Uh, they just released Flowwise 2.0, and there are a lot of features. <laughs> and there's a lot of great features that we're gonna talk about, a lot of powerful features. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we just released our first major course, Flowwise Core Essentials. And this is for those people who want to learn more about the Flowwise platform to build chatbots for themselves and for their customers. And so in this course, you're gonna learn the fundamentals, the basics uh, for building chatbots. We're gonna go basically uh, starting from the installation and, and setting up your Flowwise setup, uh, including your chatbot configuration settings uh, to actually building a chatbot. So uh, in this course, we're gonna build a, a chatbot from scratch for an e-commerce company. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue adding features uh, to make it more advanced and even more powerful. And so that's one of the projects. The other project is we're going to be building a, a content generation chatbot uh, that uses a variety of sources, including uh, YouTube transcripts and web search. So again, if you're interested in learning more about uh, building chatbots and building advanced chatbots, go ahead and check this out. All right, so let's talk about some of the latest updates that have been made to Flowwise. And uh, what I, uh, I recommend is actually checking out uh, the Flowwise release page of the, the latest features to actually find out exactly what has been added. Because sometimes there are features that just sort of, you know, they operate in self mode. <laughs> uh, they get added, but you don't realize they're there. So I would suggest you go ahead and check this out if you want to learn about some of the latest features that have been added to Flowwise. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the, uh, the biggest features that have been added and um, and show you some of the things that you can do. So if we go ahead and check out the latest version of Flowwise, currently we are on Flowwise version 2.05, okay, as of this video, right? And so one of the first things that they did was they actually brought back the ability to import and export your chat flows. And this is a big deal because, you know, if you uh, regularly update your Flowwise uh, instance, sometimes you find that you lose all of your uh, all of your data, you know, sometimes. And so having the ability to back up your chat flows by just by just exporting it and then being able to import it back in again is a really really big deal. All right? And so that's going to be really really helpful. All right, so the second feature that they've added is they've added the ability to upload documents from an S3 directory. So before, you could actually upload or uh, upsert uh, individual documents from your S3 bucket but now they've added the ability to add an entire directory. So if you have, let's say, for example, 50 PDFs in an S3 bucket, it will actually load those 50 documents for upserting. And so it's a really, really great feature if you have you know, a lot of documents from your, uh, your Amazon uh, storage uh, that, you want to, uh, that you want to work with. So the third feature is the Perplexity AI search tool. And so this is essentially an API search tool that connects to your Perplexity account uh, that allows you to do uh, various searches. And so this is a great way to you know, add more flexibility to your, uh, your Flowwise chat flows. All right, so go ahead and check this out. You can actually find this in the marketplace under the Perplexity AI search. All right, so the next one is the Retrieval Playground. And if you've been working with the document stores, you know, you've been previously able to uh, add documents to your document store and then use those in your chat flows. And so what they've done in this latest update is they've added the ability to not only view your documents and, you know, do the embeddings, but also to upsert your documents. And so this is a really, really powerful feature and it really streamlines uh, your entire workflow. So you don't actually need to do it within the individual chat flows. So for example, if we go back, we have a document store here, uh, and we've already upserted or we've already added a, a, a PDF document to the uh, to the store. And now what we can do with the playground is we can actually go and we can upsert that document. So we can select the embeddings. So this is what you would normally do within the chat flow. Uh, so in this case, you know, let's say we choose Open AI, and then we select our our API key. Uh, and then what we can do is we can actually go and select a vector store that we have installed. So in my case, I use Chroma a lot. 
Uh, and so I would go here and I would basically add all of my, uh, my details here. And so you can see, for example, this is like another, this is one uh, Chroma server URL. And then you would enter your collection name. So you would say, for example, DaVinci Resolve. And then if you have a connection uh, credential to add, you would do that there. You would add your uh, metadata filters if you want to add uh, that here. So if I have the 6K camera, I would add that there. And then I could essentially select the records manager and I could select uh, like a default MySQL records manager and I could upsert the entire document right from the playground. So this is really, really helpful uh, so that you don't actually have to deal with it in the chat flow. All right. So go ahead and check that out and uh, see how it works for you. So the next feature that they added was tool calling for Olama. And this is extremely powerful. This is a really big deal because it's going to allow you to finally do tool calling with you know your local models. Um, and so in this particular example, uh, we're using the, uh, the chat Olama model and we're using specifically the Grok Llama 3. And this will essentially call tools just like Mistral and just like OpenAI. So if you go to Olama, uh, you'll actually find that these You'll find the Llama 3 uh, Grok tools that are available. And uh, it's interesting because Grok actually developed their own open source, fine-tuned Llama 3 models to use tools more effectively. I guess they didn't want to have to be, you know, dependent upon uh, some of the other providers. So they just created their own. I haven't actually tested this. We'll have to do this at some point in time. But uh, you can go ahead and if you have Olama installed on your computer or your server, uh, you can actually use this and go ahead and check it out. All right, so let's take a look at the next feature. And the next feature, of course, is the biggest feature, <laughs> and that is uh, the Flowwise Cloud version, all right? So right now, they're still doing a wait list, but this is the, uh, the cloud version of Flowwise. So uh, it's going to allow you to basically build, you know, chatbots and not have to worry about uh, installing Flowwise if you don't want to, if you don't want to manage it. Uh, and so uh, definitely, if you're interested, go ahead and you know request access uh, and check this out. So these are some of the main features being added to Flowwise with, of course, one exception, and that is the Flowwise sequential agents, right? This is probably the biggest update that Flowwise has made uh, for version 2.0. And so what we're going to do is in the next video, we're going to talk about sequential agents and we're actually going to show you a demo of a sequential agent chat flow that we made uh, to show you how it works. So I will see you in the next video.